uh, section we are going to look at functions uh, uh, from the limited perspective of understanding different types of functions. Uh, of course, there are too many functions. It's not our intention here to cover uh, comprehensively all the functions that you will frequently use. Um, and in addition to looking at uh, functions, we are going to look at group by and having classes, uh, probably the two most important uh, classes that you will use as part of the select statement. And uh, to illustrate these, we are going to use our familiar uh, technician projects department table. And I would like you to pay attention to the projects table here project number, project name, project cost, uh, project start date, tech number. Okay, uh, As you can see, the project name is first letter uppercase everywhere here. What I am going to do is to first select um, project name, project name, from projects. If you look at the output, the output appears exactly with first letter uppercase. Now I can use a function to turn the first letter uppercase project name to let's say lower turns everything to lowercase and I'm going to use upper to turn everything to uppercase. And you can see uh, the display of the project name is uh, uppercase for every row. Uh, so lower, as I told you, will turn it to lowercase. And uh, the point I would like to emphasize is uh, this type of function um, is called a row function because row, or -O -W, row function. And that's because for each row in the original table, there is a corresponding row in the output. Okay, uh, So if the original table had million rows, you would see million rows in uppercase here. Uh, so that's a row function. In contrast, if you use this function, which finds the average of all project costs, you get one number, right? Even if the original table had million rows, you would still get only one average project cost. So this is kind of a summary function which summarizes a certain characteristics from the entire table. This type of function is called a, an aggregate function or a group function. Both names are used, aggregate function or a group function. Uh, it is essential to understand the difference between a row function and an aggregate function. There are many row functions, as I told you, you know, uh, you cannot expect someone to stand before you and teach you all the different functions. We will look at some functions as we go on, but it should uh, be your responsibility to uh, look for functions whenever you need to do certain tasks and see whether function is available and start using them. Uh, for now, we just want to understand the difference between a row function and, a, um, aggregate, and an aggregate function or a group function. Now, if I have the row, this is the average project cost for all projects. As I told you, million rows in the original table, you will get million rows here. Now, if you go and look at the project cost, there are different tech numbers for each project. So this, uh, I'm looking at the projects table, the right-hand side uh, table. And here, you can find the project cost for each technician. That's also possible, right? Instead of finding the project cost for the entire table, you can find the project cost for each technician, okay? Now, <laughs> going back to our functions a little bit. So if I say 
tech number here, okay, and execute it, you get an error. The point you have to understand is whenever you have an aggregate function here or a group function, you cannot arbitrarily combine with any other column. So, you are severely restricted on what columns you can use when you have an aggregate function here. So, now I am going to say, remove the semicolon there and say group by tag number. So, if I execute this, as you can see, you have an average project cost for each technician number, including the technician null, meaning projects that have not been assigned the technician. So, that is the purpose of a group by class. Here we are using by using group by on technic, I mean technician number. So, instead of finding the project cost for the entire table here, we are finding the project cost for each technician. That is the function of a group by. In other words, you subdivide the table into various groups based on technician number and find the average cost for each group. Okay. So, when you want to use group by, you are subsetting the table and finding an aggregate function, a group characteristic for each subset or as each group within the table. That is when we use group by. And as you can see, there are only certain columns you can, you know, technically you can group by any column, but there are only certain columns that lend themselves to group by. So, you can group by project cost, but each project cost is different. So, the table is technically not dividable by into groups by project cost. So, that is not going to work. Start date is the same thing. Each one is a different start date and you cannot look at this table as subgroups based on date. But, if you are able to extract the year portion of the project start date, P start date, if you, if you are just looking at the year, then you can subdivide the table uh, into different subgroups based on year. Then you can explore uh, the average project cost or total project cost, maximum, minimum uh, project cost for each year. That is possible. So, there are two things here. Whenever you are using an aggregate function, you are severely restricted on what columns you can add. The rule there is you can add only those columns that are in the group by. If you put a column here, that should be in the group by. You can put more than one column here, but then you will be grouping by this and then subgrouping by the second column that you mentioned. That is a little more involved. Let us not worry about it now. So, I just want to tell you, you can group by more than one column. But even now, you cannot add other columns unless it is in group by. Okay? There are four or five aggregate functions that you should know. Average, AVG, total, SUM project cost, maximum project cost, minimum project cost. These are max and min. Then you have count. These are the five functions that are most often used as an aggregate function. Yeah, so, these five functions you should be familiar with. Now, you understand group by class, I hope. The group by class is uh, divide the table into subgroups. Okay? Then you have, you can also have having. Having goes along with group by. If you do not have a group by class, there is no um, work that can be task that can be performed by having. You cannot having by itself. It goes along with group by to achieve. So, now we have a group by result. Let us say you want to isolate those technicians whose project cost is above 30,000. Okay? So, you would say average project cost greater than 30,000 
I should say 300,000 and okay so that's what happens you have isolated the technician uh, based on the average project cost so the having class is a filter to the group by I will remove it and illustrate this to you once more this is all the the result that you see now is all the technicians and their average project cost when you add this class from this list that you see now in the output you are isolating those technicians whose average project cost is greater than 300,000. Um, beginning SQL users sometimes get confused by uh, the difference in where class and having class. Having class is always with group by and it is used to filter um, a group by result. Whereas if you, you are using a where class you would probably put it here where whatever condition you want to put that is a filter to the original table it will look at the original table apply the where class filter out those rows and then do the group by so don't get confused between the two so group by and having go together uh, that completes our discussion of the uh, functions group by and having class this is a very a quick introduction and there are many subtleties that are involved which you will uh, understand as you start using it but the fundamental uh, notion of understanding uh, the group by and having class was uh, presented here thank you before we leave I would like to illustrate to you the complete syntax you know the uh, we have looked at the ANSI old style join and ANSI 89, 92 style joins. Uh, the old style is a simple where class is used to join the common column. Here we are using the keyword on um, and in the third uh, syntax we are using the keyword using. Uh, in these two cases also, in the second and third cases also, you can add additional conditions. If you want to add additional conditions in Impala SQL, you can simply say and and add as many conditions as you want. And in the case of um, the using class join, you have to say a separate where you have to say where department in and then you can use and to have additional conditions.